Transposition is the act of changing music from one key into another key, but keeping it recognisable in that new key. To keep it recognisable, we need to keep the melody shape the same, so the internal relationships between the melody notes are the same, the internal relationships between the chords are the same. And it really comes in handy when we've got a situation where a singer is struggling with the top notes and wants to lower the tune in key a few steps. Or perhaps if we're moving music from one instrument to another and the new instrument can't play the same range of notes as the original instrument. So to demonstrate the process we go through to transpose, I've written up in E minor the opening of the Sting song Valparaiso, and here's how it sounds. Rather pretty, isn't it? It sets up E minor in the first two bars. In bar three, it sharpens note six of E minor. So rather than having a C, we're going to have a C sharp, and that creates E Dorian. And then we've got this bluesy flattening of the fifth note, which is usually B natural, and it is a B natural to finish. But as we come down here, that's flattened to a B flat, making this flat five melody note, which gets the blues scale in there. Now I'll sing it to you with guitar because we've got some chords that we need to change as well. I've written the chord markings along the top of the music. Chase the dark star So you'll see the C sharp actually in bar three changes what would usually be A minor to an A major. So that Dorian actually changes the harmony too. Now what we're going to do is transfer this music from the original key of E minor down to D minor. So the first thing I've done is just written up my home scales and numbered them notes 1 through to 8, with their correct key signature. So the first thing I do is just look at how many manuscript steps the notes move between my home scale and my destination scale. So note 1 here was an E, note 1 here is a D, so that's a change of one manuscript step. I'm going from that line there down to the space. So as long as my key signature is correct, I can just move everything down one space and most, and I emphasize most of the notes, will be right. So let's start that. My first bar here, E, F sharp, G, E. If we go down to here, Here's my new D minor key signature, and I'm going to be D, F, oh, E, F, and then up to a D. My original went D, F sharp, because of the key signature, D, F sharp, G, B. So here I'm going to go C, E, F, A. For bar 3, just for now, I'm going to ignore the C sharp because that is not native to our E minor key signature. So when I'm shifting the notes, I'm not going to write that as a sharp. I'm just going to shift the note head and then we'll look at what accidental to use. So everything's going to move down, so my A, D, C sharp is going to go to G, C, B flat, because of the key signature, B flat, and then G, A, B. 
instead of the original A, B, C sharp. So G, A, B flat here. So that's my bar three. Now what happens here, I've got a D, then a B flat, A and G. So the D is going to go down to C, the B flat is going to go down to an A, the A is going to go down to a G, and the G is going to go down to an F. And then I've got this Acacia Tura, this grace note here, which is on an A, so that needs to go down to a G. And then my final note was a B, so that's going to go down to A. So let's now play that music as it sounds. And you'll hear that most, but not all of the notes, sound correct. So here is my original in E minor. So you can see, apart from where accidentals have been used, our melody is sitting in the right places. So let's now look at the accidentals. I suggest you treat each accidental in relation to its home key signature and decide what it does to the note that was given by the key signature. So this C here, According to the key signature, there's no C sharp in the key of E minor. So this C sharp, this sharp symbol here, is actually doing a plus one. I think of it as a plus one on the chromatic clock face, rather than a sharp, because it might not necessarily use a sharp symbol in our new key. It uses a sharp symbol here to make a plus one to the C, of the key signature that needed to become C sharp to make our Dorian. So there's a plus one here and that lasts for that sharp there, that C sharp there. Now, in the original key, my E minor, actually I can look at my scale here, my note five was a B and it's not a flat, but this has been flattened. So because a flat symbol has been used when there normally wouldn't be one, that's a minus one on the chromatic clock. And then that adjustment is reversed and we go back to a regular B. And because it's been flattened earlier in the bar, it needs to be naturaled. So that's what this natural symbol is doing here. So I'm just going to remind myself that there we go back to zero. In other words, we go back to the note as it should be obeying the rules of the key signature of E minor. There's nothing touching the note B so it should be a natural unless an accidental is used. So we've got a plus one here, a minus one on the acacia tura, grace note here, and then a zeroing out of that note to return to the laws of the key signature. So let's find the third note in bar three of our new version. This is a B flat, so when I plus one to it, I'm not going to move where it is on the manuscript paper. I'm just going to add an accidental. So at the moment it's a B flat. So if I'm going to plus one to it, I'm going to make it B natural. So that's lifted it by one step on the chromatic clock without changing where the note head is. This grace note here needs to have a minus one on it. Well, at the moment, this is an A, and it is not affected by the key signature at all. So, 
and A comes as standard in the key of D minor. So if we're going to minus 1 to it without changing the note head position, we're going to go to A flat. And then up here it was reversed. So I've got to reverse that A flat. So here I will use an A natural. So do you see it's quite interesting? The C sharp here became a B natural here. The B flat became an A flat. The B natural here became an A natural. So it's not a given exactly what symbols will be required, but certainly it's a given what clock steps happen. I so I missed a rhythm dot there. So now I will play this melody with our accidentals, and let's make sure that it sounds right. So here was our opening in E minor. version in D minor. So that's our melody successfully transposed from the original key of E minor down to D minor. Now, what do we do with the chords? Let's go back to our home scale of E minor, and we're going to look at what the chord means in relationship to the notes of the scale. So we're going to use Roman numerals. So E minor is the chord that is built on note 1. And it's a minor, so I'm going to write a minor there. Minor chord 1, so we write that with a small i. The chord of C major is built on a C, which is note 6, and it's a major. So that's chord 6. So I'll go capital V1 to show it's a major. Uh, the chord of G major is built on chord 3. And it's a major, so three capital I's. Right, the chord of A is built on note four, but this has a C sharp in it, making an A major chord. So that's a bit different from what we'd usually expect in a minor key, which is that chord one and chord four would both be minor. So I've made chord 4, but a major version of it, so I use capitals to show that. Now, chord 1 with the small i was E minor, so that's just going to be the same there. So now I'm not so much thinking of the chord E minor, C, G, A major, E minor. I'm thinking chord 1, 6, 3, four that's made into an unexpected major, and then one. So I'm thinking in Roman numerals. So let's get those Roman numerals written down above this bottom line here with our D minor version. So we've got chord one, then we've got chord six, and then we've got chord three, then we've got chord 4 in a major version. And then we go back to chord 1. Now, we just have to match up these with our new scale. So chord 1 is built on note 1 of the key of D minor. And so it is the chord of D minor. So I just write in D minor there. Chord 6 is based on note 6, which is B flat major. So 
So I'll write that chord name in here, B flat. Chord three here is based on note three. Note three is an F, and if I obey the key signature and just stack up a middle note and a top note on top of that, I get F major. Right, chord four is based on note four, so it's a G chord. And because of the B natural changing the law of the key signature, I've made G major. So I'll write G major for that chord there. And then I go back to chord one again, which is D minor. So let's now look at this tune with my chords transposed. Chase the dark star over the sea. Oh, where well, my true love is waiting for me. And I've successfully transferred melody and chords into our new key. So those are the steps that we go through to transpose. You'll see there's quite a lot to it, but if we're methodical and do it step by step, it's really quite simple.